I grew up with the concept of cinema as a directorial thing, meaning the director is allowed to sail the ship, not a dictatorial thing. Call Me By Your Name was one of the most critically acclaimed films of 2017, directed by Luca Guadagnino and written by James Ivory. But today, I'm going to be talking about Cyan B. Muktiprom's stunning cinematography and how he helped elevate the story of Elio and Oliver. I will be going over the pre-production process, the techniques Muktiprom used, as well as the equipment that he used to achieve the vintage and organic look. Andre Ackerman had originally written the book in 2007, and once Peter Spears and Howard Rosenman saw a galley proof of the novel, they took the screen rights before it was even published. The film was stuck in development for years, meeting with several directors and eventually meeting with Guadagnino, where he suggested that he would co-direct with James Ivory. Ivory agreed, but after the screenplay was completed, he stepped down from the role. Guadagnino ended up removing the narration and a lot of the nudity from the film, as he said it was completely irrelevant to his vision, and saying regarding the narration that it kills the surprise when the main character tells the story retrospectively. Guadagnino was impressed by Army Hammer in the social network and reached out to him for the film. Hammer almost turned down the role after reading the first draft as it contained nudity, saying, There's a lot of stuff here that I've never done on film before, but there's no way I can't do this, mostly because it scares me too much. Chalamet, on the other hand, had been introduced to Guadagnino in 2013, and had already read the novel. Guadagnino immediately felt as though the actor would be perfect for the role, as he had the ambition, the intelligence, the sensitivity, the naivety, and the artistry to play Elio. The 17th century mansion that the film is set in was actually chosen because Guadagnino wanted to buy the property, but as he was unable to afford it, he made a film there instead. As he did not want this to be a stereotypical period piece, they inspired the furniture, dishes and glassware from the characters. In fact, a lot of the furniture used was Guadagnino and Visconti de Moroderone's parents. As for the costumes, Julia Pisanti again avoided period costumes, and instead took inspiration from her parents' photo albums for the Palmans, Bruce Weber's earliest photos for Oliver, and for Elio, some items from her husband's closet. When it came to principal photography, it began in May of 2016, wrapping 33 days later in June. They shot primarily in Kramer, but also in nearby villages, Lake Garda, and several other locations. Out of the 33 shooting days, there was historic rain on 28 of them, after an unusual series of rainstorms coincided with the shooting schedule. I'm not the kind of person who's after some kind of certain look, because I don't believe in that kind of idea. If the film is set in the 80s, it doesn't mean that in 1930 it shouldn't look that way. Nature doesn't change during the 40 or 50 years. The architecture does change, of course. Siren Boom Bhakti Prom has managed to achieve what many cinematographers aspire to in every film, and that is to have the camera play a character. He would frequently drift into using handheld in order to make the audience feel as though you were there with them in the scene. We would also give the characters privacy, for example, in the pivotal scene in which they get physical with each other for the first time. We turn towards the window, looking at the trees outside. This is also an example of Guadagnino changing Ivory's original script. At first, Mukti Prom was thinking about shooting with all natural light, but as the weather conditions worsened, he was unable to. When it came to the shooting of the scenes, he would usually observe the actors and director, seeing where they would go and lighting for that but at the same time giving them freedom so that they wouldn't have to stick to it. The use of movement is very prominent throughout the film, from the long takes on a dolly to the simple pan. For example, the scene at the war memorial was shot on a long dolly track as the flow of emotion is too great to cut in a scene like that. Before shooting, Mukti Prom read the novel and walked around the locations to get a feeling for everything. He wanted to see the colour, how the light changed during the day, and just note everything down for production. The look of the film is natural, but Mukti Prom is not one to go after a certain look. Instead, he tries to imagine that everyone can have their own interpretation of it. For example, if he were Elio, what would he feel about these things? He tries to observe every moment and never interferes with the director or actors, saying about Guadagnino. The elements are all there which Luca combined with his blocking. I've never had a collaboration with a director that was so natural in how the scene unfolds, and how I just instinctively react based on what he is doing and what he has created in front of the camera. Right now, there's sorrow, pain, don't kill it, and with it the joy you've felt. Muck 
Multiprom shot the film with a single lens, the 35mm Cook S4. He also has a rule of only shooting on film. For this, he used the Arricam LT and on Kodak's Vision 3 500T 5219. Cook S4s are known for their warming look and ability to make the image look as organic as possible. Vision 3 500T has reduced grain in the shadows and still retains the look of Vision 2 film stocks. The use of one lens solidifies the point of view of the audience, and in the case of Call Me By Your Name, a whole other character. Overall, Muktiprom's ability to make the camera a character in the film ultimately brings the audience in closer than we already were. We never feel as though we are intruding on the characters, but we are still there in the scene. He is very observational. I hope you enjoyed this video looking at Sarah Mbu Muktiprom's cinematography on Call Me By Your Name. If you have a cinematographer or film that you would like to see me do a video on, leave a comment down below. If you found this video helpful, a thumbs up is appreciated, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.